At this point in time, NASA has a goal to take humans to the surface of Mars. I'm Crystal Johnson. I'm Deputy Center Director for Technology and Research Investments at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. And today I'm answering those questions that you've always wanted to know about NASA. The biggest project that we're working on is James Webb Space Telescope. That is, if you're familiar with Hubble Space Telescope, James Webb is the next version of that. It's gonna help us to see so much further into the past than we've ever been able to do before. We're only about 18 months away from having that thing launched. We have a wonderful goal to be able to take the first woman and the next man to the surface of the moon by 2024. That's very, very ambitious and we're really excited At this point in time, NASA has a goal to take humans to the surface of Mars. That has been our plan for quite some time now. And so we are working on the moon activity so that we can develop the technologies and the capabilities to get us ready to have a human presence on Mars. And so if we had some type of catastrophic event, if we were ready, we could actually transport people from Earth to Mars, from Earth to Moon, and then from Moon to Mars or whatever. NASA has been known for its transparency. I can't imagine that we would try to keep it from the public. We are the largest science center that NASA has. NASA has 10 centers, and Goddard Space Flight Center has about 10,000 people. We are really the ones that are on the forefront thinking about what are the next missions that we're gonna be doing, um, and making them a reality, building the spacecraft, uh, everything we're able to do right there at, at Goddard Space Flight Center. Goddard Space Flight Center is a huge college campus. Uh, we have over 40 some buildings there, about 1,200 acres. We have about 10,000 people, um, different restaurants for people to be able to, to have lunch in. Many times they come into the Earth's atmosphere, but they break up before we even know what's going on. You see these streaks going across the sky and, and things like that, but nothing so big that it would cause a catastrophic event. So I would say that it depends on what you mean by life. Um, if you're talking about microbial life, we know that that existed. If we know that there was water and there's microbial life in there that can tell us a lot about what the atmosphere and the environment looked like at that time. In terms of intelligent life, that's another deal. And I personally do not know if there's other intelligent life out there. Don't know, don't ask me the question about the aliens and all of that because I don't know about any of that. <laughs> I first started at NASA by doing a summer internship. They were taking me to one of the labs and there was one of those neon signs outside on the door saying, danger, laser hazard inside. And the scientist opens up the door and he's like, wear these goggles and don't lean down to the level of the table because there are laser beams going around the room. And if one pops you in your eye, you might be blind. I was like, what in the world am I getting myself into? And the engineer is leaning over the table. He had one of those lab coats with the big sleeves back in the day. And I heard pop, 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 and smoke came up. His, la his sleeve got caught in the laser beam. So then I was like, yes, this is the field for me. You get to shoot lasers around the room and put holes and stuff. That is the kind of thing that I could do as a life job. So that's what got me started. I was hooked after that. The work that I did as a part of my PhD thesis. Um, I don't know how many of you remember the Columbia accident where we were coming back into the Earth's atmosphere with the, with the shuttle and it actually started coming apart. And for, that, for us, it was a really, really bad day because it killed our family members, the astronauts that were coming back into the Earth's atmosphere. And, uh, and we as engineers took that to heart. I mean, that was part of our family. But for me, the greatest part of that is when it was coming back and falling apart, it was coming apart over Texas. And we were very concerned because there was still the fuel in it. And the fuel that we use is hydrazine, which is really toxic. 
If you in inhale those fumes, it will kill you. But I'm asking myself, why are we still using such toxic fuels instead of going ahead and transitioning to green fuels? We have finally gotten to a place now with lots of years of work. We have a mission now that's flown with this green propellant that we've been working on for years. So I'm really, really happy that we're taking that final step so that we can save lives and, and lower the risk for the humans on the earth that are working with these fuels. Ah, I think my favorite space movie is Hidden Figures. It is an amazing, amazing thing. And for us to be able to see, you know, the, the fear that was there when he's getting ready to launch, he's like, I'm not going until she gives me these numbers. For him to even take that journey was incredible. And for those women to come to the table and have the kind of strength and power and fortitude to be the ones that were instrumental in us doing that, it's just, it's just beyond for me. So for NASA, diversity is absolutely critical. There's no way that we could do the impossible things that we do without having diverse people come to the table. And by diverse, I mean people with totally different backgrounds, people who don't look alike, people who've got totally different life experiences and life exposures, because only when you have that kind of diversity coming to the table can you come up with real innovative solutions to the challenges that you face. Don't let anybody discourage you from pursuing a, st a STEM field. People say math is hard. I will tell you there's not a single concept on the planet of this earth that cannot be explained in a way that a third grader can understand it. But don't give up. Just do not give up and don't let anyone tell you what you can do and what you can't do. NASA is very much independent. We are very fortunate to not be a political organization and we are, we are fortunate to not be influenced by what's going on in the media or what's going on um, with just public opinion. Because we are answering science, scientific questions and because we're providing the raw data that political people can spin however they want, the media can spin it however they want, we are the baseline that everyone can kind of work from. So what you're getting when you get NASA data is the raw data. And that's something we've prided ourselves on for the whole time that NASA has been in existence. And that's how it's going to be, hopefully, for eternity. So when I talk about global collaboration for our, our Artemis mission, which is going to the moon and then on to Mars, we've been working with Russia, we've been working with Japan, we've been working, you know, the whole European community. And we've been so excited that just recently Australia came to the table. And with this new Australian Space Agency, Australia has signed an agreement with the United States Australia will be bringing $150 million to the table. They've committed to do so, so that they can have a, a significant role in this particular mission. When you have an impossible mission that has to be done by 2024, you can't create something from nothing. You gotta take the best and the brightest that already exist. I'm in Australia today as a part of the StartCon conference, really talking about those startup companies and giving them a little bit of innovation or ideas to think about broadening their scope and showing them how they can work with us on the future missions of NASA. So there's so much excitement right now around the world when it comes to space. And for any of the little kids in Australia that are very interested and in, in coming to NASA or, to, or getting involved in space, this is a great time for you because you now have your own space agency. And this space agency is really working very closely with NASA and with other space agencies around the world for maybe you to be an astronaut and for you to be one of the people who helps us explore Mars at some point in time. So the sky is truly not the limit for you. We're hoping that maybe Mars will be.